Hello, welcome back to Goblin Gaming. We are here uh, in Soulstone Survivors. I'm Xanthus, and we're going to be playing the new Frost Weapon for the Arcane Weaver today. The Arcane Weaver also got a new talent tree system. As you can see here, these little mana crystals will spawn when you kill enemies now, and when you grab them, if you fill up your mana bar completely, you get a buff. The buff gives me a 50% damage modifier, 20% movement speed, 12% area damage, 112% multicast. Yes, you heard that right, 112%. It's actually nuts. Once it fills up, it will slowly, or it will quickly deplete. You can continue grabbing mana crystals to kind of race against and keep it filled up, but yeah, I mean, similar mechanic to Paladin, it's just a little bit different. Um, it's an item you grab off the ground versus a circle you have to stand in. I would much prefer this as opposed to what the Paladin has, but, you know, you go with what you got, so, yeah. I'm thinking our main goal with this build is we're going to be stacking a lot of different ice skills. The secret uh, spell for this weapon is basically uh, the book from Vampire Survivors, uh, the orbs that, like, kind of go around you. In this game, it is a... Frozen Snowflake Orb Circle, so it's kind of cool. Uh, frozen Blade throws a powerful Icy Blade forward and then comes back to a current position, dealing damage and transforming all stacks of slow into paralysis. That has a lot of potential. Yeah, I think we'll, uh, I think we'll grab Frozen Blade. We definitely want to get Ice Vortex as our kind of main damage dealer. It scales damage based on the number of stacks of slow or paralysis we have. This will be nice because it'll help transport our po our uh, slows into uh, paralysis, which is a damage multiplier. If you didn't know uh, what paralysis does, it reduces movement speed by five percent per, per stack, increases direct damage taken by one percent per stack. So it's a good way to scale hard hitting abilities. Doesn't do anything for dots, but very good for hard hitting abilities. We're not really going to be relying on dots anyway, so it's fine. We're taking Sacrifice Growth, so each level we get, we get 1% more damage up to level 80 when we get 80%. The trade-off for that is we have a little bit less experience as we level up, so we're going to want to make sure we're grabbing some Magnet Upgrades. We're also grabbing Healing Flow to give us some self-sustain, Multicast for more damage, Ice Mastery so we can get access to some Ice Skills we wouldn't normally have access to. Primarily, uh, that frozen blade that we're using right now is actually an arcane weaver ability so that was one of the reasons we took it uh the other reason is i would like to get freezing blow from the elementalist which does the same thing as arcane blade does but if not that's not that big of a deal it might even be better to not do that and just focus a little bit more i can't remember if these guys actually apply slow on hit i feel like they do Surprise Gift is good too. I'm going to lock Surprise Gift and grab the helpers and just see when they're attacking if they do apply slow or not because I'm not quite sure. I think Surprise Gift is okay. We'll see. Let's see, okay. Watch where they're throwing stuff. They're killing things. I can't tell. They are applying slow, yes. Okay. Cool. I thought they did. I couldn't remember for sure. We could grab Arcane Power for even more multicast action, but honestly, I don't think we really have the room for it. So I don't want to grab it because I don't want to be forced to invest in it. This is kind of nice. Ricocheting. Sooner Cold. Basically like Chaos Missile that ricochets around. We're going to lock the uh, cast speed of the blade and then take the multicast of our beam. I really want to get the multicast of that beam up through the roof. Okay, blizzards definitely must take. That's going to replace glacier. Blizzard is really nice because it just gives stacking slows on the ground. And if we scale our area up like to the moon, it's going to be really nice. We're going to need to turn down the spell effects pretty soon here, I think. We might end up dropping the elves, as much as I like them. Yeah, I think the the gift is is more 
valuable than the elves. Because it applies paralysis directly and a big burst of damage, so I think it's actually pretty decent. Go ahead and lock to keep the increased movement speed one, because we're going to need to pick up some more movement speed for sure. Okay. Doing pretty decent. Got multicast of Ice Vortex, sounds groovy. Yeah, so we grab Blizzard. We've increased the or we've increased our application and chill through that. We need to grab lots of area of effect to really make it pop off. More damage on the vortex is good. It's gonna be our primary way of killing things. We don't have a ton of self-sustain, so we can't just tank hits on this like we could on our uh, paladin. A bit of a downside there. Hopefully we have enough damage to blow through these initial bosses relatively quickly so we don't get behind. If you didn't know, uh, mobs and bosses scale the damage and health they have based on time in game, total elapsed time. So if you can get through the first stage and get into endless in a like sub 8 minute fashion, it goes a really long ways. Here's an idea, what we could grab Arcane Shield. Give us some extra toughness. Just drop the gifts and grab Arcane Shield. That way we have a little bit more toughness. I'm gonna lock the attack speed on the beam and grab Hypothermia so not everything we do does chill. Or sorry, every slow we apply applies fragility. I want area of effect on Blizzard so I'll lock that as well. So we really need to stack just an absurd amount of cooldown reduction here so we can keep that shield up as much as possible. It's going to be one of our big goals here. Avalanche is so good, it applies so much slow, but it used to crash my PC. I don't know if it still will do that. If not, then it's better than Blizzard, because it's going to apply more stacks of slow. We'll risk it. Worst case, you won't see this video if it crashes my computer. <laughs> Alright. Yeah, because you get a lot of those casts going out and you can just see how quickly it amps up the, the slows. It gets up there real, real quick. Once it locks onto a target, you can dash away and you'll still keep hitting that target, which is kind of nice. Let's grab some crit chance. More attack speed on our severe cold. Severe cold might actually get swapped out. It's okay, it's a ricocheting, bouncing slow bolt. I think maybe I should have replaced that rather than replacing blizzard. We might grab blizzard again. I'm wasting a few uh, spell ranks here with my indecision, unfortunately. Okay, I'm not grabbing any of that. Merciless is an option, but we do have reroll mastery, so we can be a bit aggressive with these rolls early on. I definitely take area of effect for Ice Vortex and Avalanche. That's fantastic. If I had a lock, I would lock that as well, but I don't, so it's all good. See if we can focus down these bosses in a relatively reasonable time period. Grab some multicast mastery. Keep just killing random guys to restore some health, hopefully. Take more area of effect on our avalanche. Vicious strikes is always tempting as well, uh, but we're going to be hitting very fast and then detonating, so our detonation is not going to get the benefit from Vicious Strike, so it's not quite as good. Because obviously they're not going to be at 100% health if they've been hit a few times first. There's a uh, legendary gem in Diablo 4 called the Barber, that once you crit, it defers all damage for X number of seconds. 
and then explodes in the area of effect for that damage. If I had something like that in this game, that would be amazing for Vicious Strikes. But, sadly we do not have that. So, wishes were horses, we'd all be eating steak, but since it's not, I'm eating ramen. Kill these guys. Not sure how much benefit the shield is really giving us. I think it's giving us a good amount of time, so. We just took a few hits there and only took 7 damage. I feel like we would have taken a lot more, so. I think it's still pretty good. Alright, let's grab some more area effects on our ice things, although 24 resilience is really good. We really do need to scale the area of effect on our ice stuff, though. Alright. Oh yeah, that avalanche is going to work. Definitely the right choice. Uh, I'm going to drop Ricocheting for Blizzard as soon as we get another opportunity for it. I think that'll be a lot better for us. Or if there's a better option, we'll take it, but... Actually, you know, Arcane Power is probably just better than Severe Cold. We'll just get lots and lots and lots of uh, snowballs flowing out. I know I said I wasn't going to take it earlier, but it's, it's too good to not take, especially since the class mechanic for this character seems to lean into multicast. Having even more multi- oh my god. Having even more multicast does that. Oh my lord, alright. Yeah, that's, uh, that's pretty spicy, isn't it? Uh, and it's not crashing my computer, so that's something. We'll see how it gets once we get really absurd with it, though. We are going to need to turn down the graphical effects pretty soon here, though. I'll see if I can tough it out for the remainder of stage 1 before I turn it down. I'll probably do stages 2 through 4 um, in the cut and then just come back on stage 5. That tends to be where things get a little bit complicated and spicy. If it's looking like it's going to be getting spicier earlier than that, I'll come back a little bit earlier. Try not to kill myself on the Reaper by not paying attention like I did on the last video. But, uh, yeah. This, is, uh, this definitely looks like it has some, uh, some real potential to it. I think the beams could be really cool once I get enough multicast of them. Just have them splay in, flaying out everywhere. It almost reminds me of the uh, Shotgun Crusader in Diablo 3. can't remember for the life of me what it was called, what that ability was called. I think it's like Heaven's Fury, maybe? I think it was Heaven's Fury. And it's the the rune that makes it split into three beams in a frontal projection. It looks a lot like this, except for it's yellow instead of blue. And it's like quick bursts instead of a channeled beam. So not really anything like it in reality, but in my brain that's what I thought of. So, you know, deal with it. All right. Get them spiders. Get them dead. Damage increase for Avalanche I think is going to be good. I mean, we're primarily taking it for the chill applications, for the slow applications, but um, we're doing so many launches of it, it can't, it can't actually hurt to do uh, a little bit more damage with it, so. I believe the damage on the Arcane Shield actually increases the amount we absorb, so if we can increase that up, that would be really helpful too. We want to get near 100% uptime on that Arcane Shield as a way to give us our toughness. Since we don't have a ton of recovery, we have a little bit through the every hundred enemies you kill, you restore some health thing, but that's really not going to be enough to sustain when stuff gets really crazy. It's just going to be enough to top up and bring stuff back around um, so that we can continue to sustain ourselves. Okay. Sorry, I keep getting interrupted. Oh, don't, don't surrender. Resume. Alright, uh, so we have one more set of bosses before we enter into Endless. I think we should try to make it a goal. Ooh, what's this? Oh, this is what we want. This is uh, the King Bible book thing. I forgot that it was here. I forgot it was a thing. 
Okay, gotta stop and think for a second about what we're gonna replace. Okay, our game power is definitely really good. But I think that's what I'm gonna drop, because I, I really need Avalanche, because it applies just crazy amounts of slow. I really need Frozen Blade, because it transfers our slow into Paralysis. I just want to run Frostbeam. I could theoretically drop this, but I, I kind of want to see how it gets once you get it fully amped up. And then Ice Vortex is mandatory. It's our main damage dealer. And Arcane Shields are sustained, so that really just leaves us with Arcane Power that we can draw. So we're going to do that because Ice Shield just sounds way too cool to not run. So let's go ahead and do that. And then we're going to get... Look at that. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? We have a buzzsaw of icicles rolling around us. And we just walk into enemies and go pop. And uh, apparently use all of our health because we walked into death. But that's neither here nor there. It's more, uh, more demonstration of power than anything. I'm just going to pretend like I didn't almost die there. Let's go ahead and take out some of these stupid pillars that are giving us trouble. There we go. Alright, great. Take out another one. Boom. Go for a third one. There we go. Our vortexes are getting pretty large, which is good. We're going to need a crazy amount of cooldown reduction in order to be able to maintain our shields. And since we're dropping our team power, we're not going to be multicasting it as much. So, I don't know if it actually stacks. I can't remember if it stacks on multicast with that. I feel like it does, though. I know they nerfed the heck out of that. I was going to take Freezing Blow originally instead of Frozen Blade. This is a... Piercing projectile, this is a frontal code. 3.6% second cooldown. This is a 2.8 second cooldown. I think this is going to be better. Let's go and take that. It's got a lower cooldown. Not sure how many of the upgrades we've taken actually apply. A decent number of them. Area of effect ones are the most important, so that's good. Okay. Oh yeah, it's pretty solid. Just have to make sure we're near enemies that we need to convert the stacks on when our cooldown for our Cone of Cold Blast is up. Ow! I would appreciate if you guys didn't do that in the future. That'd be great. Thanks. We're so close to losing one of our lives here. Let's see if we can hold on just a little bit longer. Got a shield coming up soon. Thankfully, the uh, enemy kills heal us thing is saving our life right now. We're just farming some low level guys, and we are nowhere close to under eight minutes here, which is actually worrying me. I don't even know if we'll be able to enter endless at this stage. We're, uh, we're going a lot slower than I would have anticipated. Too much switching of skills, I guess. Let's see if we can focus in here and just nuke some stuff down instead. Grab more area of effect. That Indomitable was pretty tempting because you do want to get a decent amount of battle resilience at some point. But I think at this point right now, it's more important to grab area of Okay, there goes our first light. As long as we can go into Endless with at least one sheet death, I'll be happy. If we can get to Endless, I'm going to play this really aggressively. If we lose our second sheet death, so be it. We need to be able to get into Endless mode, which means we need to kill these guys very, very, very soon. So, uh, it's just, I, can't, I don't know what they changed the timer to. I do know they changed it. It used to be 12 minutes. I think it's 14 now, but we're pushing it. Definitely pushing it. This is not the strongest start I've ever seen by any means. We might have to give it another go. 
slightly different setup to start. Perhaps changing the rooms. Maybe we don't take the delayed growth. That one is meant to be basically like an end game spike one, but if it's hurting our our power early too much, then we might have to sacrifice it. All right. Well, we cleared it. Let's see if we have the option for endless. We do. Good. All right. We're going to go into endless mode. I'm going to just farm for as long as I can. Once I lose my next cheat death, we will uh, cut back and record from there. So see you guys soon. Alrighty, ate a really big hit and lost my extra cheat death, so let's go ahead and just resume play from here. We're on Endless 2, uh, coming up on the last set of bosses. Definitely could have avoided that shot. Thought I was going to kill these guys a little quicker than I did, so a little bit of hubris backfiring on me there. Um, as you can see, we are at the point where most abilities are covering most of the screen, so we've got a good amount of air of effect in place. We still need a lot more cooldown reduction to keep our shield up and rolling to maintain toughness. We might need to come up with an alternative way to maintain toughness on this build. Might take another shot at it, but I don't know. I feel like we need more healing built in. The 100 enemies heals you a little bit thing wasn't quite as impactful as I'd hoped it'd be. Maybe instead I grab extra access to holy abilities and just put exorcism in and run exorcism in place of arcane shield. Arcane shield should in theory be good if we can keep the uptime on it. Maybe... Oh, as much as I hate to say it, maybe we drop the the frost beam and we put on like bloodlust to give more cooldown reduction. That might be the better play. I'm not going to do it on this run, because this run is almost over. I might give that a try, do the same build. And just uh, replace Arcane Beam with Bloodlust. <clears throat> so that we can keep Arcane Shield up more often. Might be pretty good. I also am I'm kind of wondering if perhaps the, the Arctic Blade is a better choice than the, the Freezing Blow. Just because it goes off screen a little bit. We could potentially grab the rune that makes projectiles go further, but I don't know if that's worth it. I definitely think dropping the uh, delayed growth, um, which is sacrifice growth, which is a big multiplier. It really hurt our initial leveling and speed of game. Um, in reality, at 30 minutes, we should be on endless five there's no reason for us to be on endless three at this point boy i definitely need more frequency on the shield that crit's hard to pass and so is the movement but okay, we need to get that cooldown of that shield down so that drops it from 11.1 .1 to 10 second cooldown we really ideally need to get it five seconds or under in order for it to be really effective that way, if we drop it, all we have to do is kite for a second or two. The nice thing about it is it, it absorbs the first hit even if it goes all the way through the shield. At least it used to. I'm not sure if they changed that, actually. They might have. Let's grab some more health. Did we do the scaling health thing? No, maybe that's a better solution. <clears throat> maybe we just stack a ton of health. And we switch the Sacrifice Growth Rune into the... You get more cooldown reduction, the more health you're missing. And then we just sustain through Arcane Shield as we get low on health. That actually could work really well. You can try that out. Okay, damage for pretty much everything. Yeah, we'll take that. Legendary damage upgrades are always nice. Hard to pass them up when you see them. Also hard to pass up swift, but we really need cooldown reduction. Like, 
something fierce. If we're going to be able to push into higher endless stages, we absolutely positively must get more full down reduction here. Our main damage abilities are going off pretty much constantly, but the bigger issue is the shield. Alright, it's a bit of a nasty spawn here. I don't, we can't really hide this UI. If we could, you'd be able to see there's a death thing coming from the left, or from the right top, bottom right, and then from the left as well. And then we have guys rushing us from the bottom, which means there's probably going to be some bomb boys down there. That's going to be the safest way to cut either way, but... We're gonna cut down. Okay, no bomb boys. That's lucky. And it looks like actually the boss has died almost instantly, so perhaps I overthought things there. Thought they were gonna last quite a bit longer than they did. Grab 10% raw damage on everything. It's always good. And we didn't have our arcane power active there. Okay. We're doing a little bit better than I thought we were, I think. How much is our paralysis is hitting for 824 with arcane? So it's 824 per slack per stack of slow. We're stacking up probably a hundred or so slow on bosses before they die. So it's like 8,000 damage, that's pretty good. More durations, not super useful for arcane shield. Since we already cast it um, <clears throat> faster than the duration. So it's kind of a dead, st <clears throat> dead stat unless it stacks. Um, I don't know if there's a way to tell if it's going to stack or not. Let's go ahead and take it. And I'm wondering if like... I wonder if when we have the shield active, it gives us any sort of indicator as to how much there is of it. Doesn't like it. That'd be kind of nice if we had like a secondary bar that showed a shield amount. It's a little hard to tell if it stacks as it is. I don't think it does. Yeah, I think I'm going to stay away from the duration on that. Let's grab even more area on our snowballs. We have the biggest snowballs you've ever seen. Grab some more cooldown reduction. Here's what it looks like, by the way, with graphics on. Just constant ice everywhere. All right, knock him out, Let's grab some more cooldown reduction, more cooldown reduction. Just actually a big power spike there with like 35% cooldown reduction between those three upgrades. Go ahead and banish out fragility at this point, I think. Wait, we have fragility, right? Are you kidding? I haven't picked up fragility? Oh my god. Okay, hold on. Let's go ahead and pick up Fragility, because apparently we're gimping ourselves. That's actually really big. That's a big multiplier. That'll up our damage even more. Alright. We might end up getting up in endless 5-6. We're starting to come online now. It just took a really long time with the sacrifice growth, but we're definitely coming online now. Right. That's a good sign. Pretty much one shot at that uh, Void Hunter. Oh boy, oh boy. Let's go. Oh boy, oh boy. Okay, right, let's go ahead and activate our Mana Crystal. Grab even more area of effect on our vortex. Sounds good. Pretty much covers the whole screen. If we can get it to go a little bit off screen, that's even better. Okay, and those guys went down very quickly, I feel like, so that's good. 
Magnet for more experience is tempting. Ah, uh, glad we re-rolled though. 30% on shield or 15% on everything. Everything else is relatively low. We really need the cooldown on the shield just as low as possible. I'm down to 8 seconds. It's getting closer to where I want it. I mean, the ideal world, obviously, is we have like one second or less cooldown on shield and then we're just immortal. But uh, that's probably not going to happen anytime soon. We need to also be considering the idea of stacking up some health so we have a little bit of a buffer that we can heal back up while our shield is active. Because otherwise we might find ourselves in a place where we uh, just slowly drain down our health. And since we don't have any damage or cooldown reduction scaling with health loss on this particular run, we would be really in a bad state if that were the case. Take more damage on our main damage dealer, sure. Yeah, see, look at that. Just like a quarter of a second of a beam, I lost half my health there. That's spooky. Damn. Alright. Let's banish out Touch of Ice, because hmm, I think we already took a rank of that, right? Hypothermia is there, so that means we should have... I actually am not seeing it, though. Oh, there it is. Touch of Ice. Okay. Let's banish out Touch of Ice. Okay. Let's banish out Area of Effect. Okay. Uh, what's our crit chance at? 95. We'll take 12% damage increase. Sure. Sure. I was thinking about banishing it, but I wanted to save my banish for Leviathan. There we go. Good chunk of movement speed. We actually kind of need it right now. <clears throat> We're starting to kind of fall behind on being able to dodge things. Actually, it looks like the crystals give us a small heal too. I didn't realize that. So we need to be making sure we're picking those up whenever we can. That's good to know. Grab a little bit more movement speed. Alright. Uh, let's grab some more health. See if we can nuke these guys down a little quickly. Yeah. Oh wow, yeah, they melted. Yeah, so just staying alive is our main issue at the moment. Uh, so let's grab some more cooldown reduction on shield. Got it down to 6.9 seconds. Not bad. Not bad. Okay. Go ahead and move on to the next level. I do think the hitboxes on the crystals is a little bit janky. They need to extend it out a little bit, I think. Sometimes it's a little bit difficult to pick them up. Versus the like regular health crystals are affected by your magnetism, so they come they will suck into you from further away. <clears throat> I'd actually like to see magnetism affect these things too. That would make for a big quality of life improvement. Might make this skill a little bit too powerful though, if they did that. Maybe if they had it gain half of the effect of your pickup range, that would be sufficient. Or even a quarter of the effect. It's just having to be pretty much directly on top of it kind of sucks. Doesn't feel very good. See, like, I literally ran through that twice. And it's not picking it up. Look at that. Isn't that crazy? I might kill myself showing that off. Okay, this is getting ridiculous. I can't pick that crystal up. Or that one. Jesus. That's what I'm talking about. Like, you get moving too fast, it gets really hard to pick them up. You have to stop to pick it up. Because you just move through it otherwise. That's an issue. That's a really big issue. 
Because stopping in endless mode can be death. The reason why the Paladin one's a little bit harder to use. Because <laughs> you have to stand in that channel circle. They thankfully have a lot of pushback resistance and toughness and healing, but still. Yeah, I think the 15 health per 100 enemies killed is just a wasted, a wasted rune. Okay. Endless 4, not terrible. Uh, Ice Vortex, unsurprisingly, doing the massive amount of damage. Avalanche right behind that. Ice Shield was a very late pickup, and it did a lot. So that's good to know. Looking at DPS numbers strictly. Yeah, Avalanche and Ice Shield are neck and neck, so good to know. Ice Vortex, yep, that makes sense. Freezing Blow did pretty well, actually. Not sure what Astral Safeguard is. Oh, that's the talent thing that when you take damage, you do an explosion of damage, right? Okay. Yeah, I think the play here is basically running this exact same build. Maybe dropping Frostbeam for Bloodlust. And then dropping Sacrifice Growth and healing flow. So drop healing flow, drop sacrifice growth. That frees up five points. And we can take the missing HP gives us cooldown reduction. We dropped reroll mastery and missing HP grants damage. I don't think damage is the issue, though. I think it's maintaining the health that's the issue. Maybe you grab Unwavering Presence. When you get low on health, you just regen it back up. The problem is you just go from alive to dead. Like, there's no... It's hard to get below 25% health and actually live is the issue. Twenty-five percent crit chance, just straight up solid. Executioner, getting another damage multiplier that might be worth it. Because really, you're gonna be able to apply all your base level debuffs through, you know, all the on-hit effects. That might not be bad. Divine Legacy every 25 levels, you get three legendaries. I thought I remembered there being like a, a lock master or something like that. Did they remove that? I have all the achievements, right? Yeah. I thought that in addition to reroll mastery, there's like a banish mastery or a lock mastery. Maybe they removed that back out. Maybe I'm remembering wrong. Yeah, because this is all classification based. I'm not seeing it anywhere in here. That's too bad. So that'd be a really nice one to have. Yeah, I think the best one is probably Executioner. Critical Mastery could be good too, though. I think Executioner is just better. Sure-Footed would be really nice too, just to reduce the amount of damage you take. And then we're kind of wasting a point, though. Do we need Skill Mastery Ice? I don't know if we do. Let's try this. Let's take Sure-Footed. 
and then a generalist. Oh, amplified power. Boom, just straight up 50%, no downside. Okay. I'm going to try that. And, you know, if it's successful, maybe I'll make a video for it. But, uh, like, favorite, share, subscribe. Hopefully you guys like this.